Welcome back. Well, lately we have been taking a trip down memory lane and looking at rooms, design styles, everything from tile to bathroom fixtures throughout the past. And I thought it was high time we took a look at kitchen appliances because kitchen appliances are something we very much take for granted. But in fact, especially if you're doing a retro kitchen, the right appliance can make or break your design. So, when we come back, Pretty sure you all recognize our starting point. Today we are looking at refrigeration and this is where it begins. This is the icebox. Prior to the advent of the icebox, if you wanted to keep things cool, uh, you might put them outside your window in the winter time, leave them on the porch, in rural areas, they had spring houses, little stone buildings uh, that were erected over a creek so the cool water would keep things cool. But in general, if you didn't live in an auspicious area, you really did without until the advent of the icebox. And frankly, as the name implies, it's a box for ice. Your ice would be delivered. They had ice men. They'd come along in their horse and wagons and they would give you a large block of ice which would be either shoved in one of these front doors or as we will see on the next one because they came in several sizes it might be dropped in through that little trap door on the top. Now, this is probably what an icebox in a city apartment in New York, Boston, Philadelphia would have looked like. Uh, they were smaller, that little compartment, which was probably, you know, two feet by two feet by two feet at most, is where you would keep things. In general, just about the only thing you kept in your refrigerator was something that would absolutely spoil in a couple of days without being kept cool. So it would have been things like milk or raw meat. Now, this is another type of ice box. This is the sort of ice box I see a lot of around here. These were metal ice boxes. They come from a period a little later, the early 20th century. The previous ice boxes, the oak ones, the ones we just saw, would have been late 19th through early 20th century. But by the time we hit the early 1900s, yes, we had painted metal. They worked the same way in this case one of those doors, probably the door on the lower right, would have held the ice. And here you go. That's where you kept your stuff. You could clearly keep a lot more things in an ice box this size, even though the ice box itself is still relatively small. It would have been an improvement over the tiny one that had room only for uh a few bottles of milk. In this case, the major improvement was good insulation, and they were actually using materials to insulate the thin metal walls instead of relying on nothing more than the insulating properties of the thick oak walls and doors. From here, 
we actually move into real refrigerators. Now, I'm sure you're waiting for me to say, and they were powered by electricity. Yes and no. Yes, indeed. Some of them were powered by electricity. However, in the early 20th century, many refrigerators were powered by gas. I know it's hard for us to wrap our heads around, but in fact, gas refrigeration was a thing. In this case, we have a refrigerator. It's a lovely shade of green, and we're going to talk about that later. And it's based on the icebox style. The reason for this is people had a concept of what a refrigerator was, and that was an icebox. And so the very early refrigerators were modeled on that form that people were used to. It took a while for the general public and even the manufacturers, and you would think they'd catch on sooner, to recognize the fact that a refrigerator was not an icebox. So the early ones are very icebox looking. This is a large piece. This would not have been something for the average home. Uh, and keep in mind, refrigerators in general were not something for the average home. They were expensive appliances. Here is a piece like the one we just saw, a two-door refrigerator. Uh, the, this one is probably electric. The gas models were usually a little clunkier because of the need to accommodate the gas piping. It has two doors. It opened it. If those doors were closed, you would look at that and say, oh, look, a white cabinet. The styling was still very much the same as it had been when these pieces were made of wood. Again, they just hadn't caught quite on yet. Uh, this one, you can see a little more of what this looks like because one of the doors is closed. And as you can tell, this, this one is great because we get to see how very little this refrigerator could accommodate. You had a very tiny freezer area, usually enough to hold a couple of ice cube trays and maybe uh, a frozen steak. Who knows? It was not much. And they all had to be manually defrosted. Frost built up very quickly. So this, of course, is a large, elegant Frigidaire piece. But again, look at how much this resembles a cabinet. Now, when we move from that early style of cabinet-looking piece, we get over to pieces like this. And this is what we tend to think of when we think of 1920s refrigeration. These are called monitor tops. And that little drum on top of the refrigerator was part of the cooling mechanism. Now, in this image, and we've got two of them side by side, you can see the one on the left has its cord coming down and wrapping around the door handle. So, yes, electric. And now uh, we're getting into some more of the monitor top pieces. Again, what I want you to notice is the cabinet-like style. Notice they are raised up off the floor. That is what people were used to. And they have uh, a surface-mounted door. The door is not inset. It's surface-mounted. Here's a good picture. Now, this is probably a retro piece. Uh, it could be original. If it is original, it's it's been completely refurbished. You can see it's, it's very clean and sparky looking. And in this case, you get a good idea of how big these pieces were. On the right, we have an average door. So you're looking at a refrigerator exclusive of that monitor top that 
probably only runs about four feet high. Here's more. And I love the ads because the ads show us what they were trying to sell and what the features were. Again, very, very small piece. You weren't going to fit much in here. And more. Notice this one has a very space age looking monitor on top. It's not, not a drum here. We have this nice round ball. Again, we still have something that looks like a cabinet. And please notice the freezer. That is that little uh, box on the inside of the refrigerator in the upper right hand side. About all you could stick in there was a few ice cube trays. And here, once again, and notice this one has a few more shelves, but again, this is a magazine ad, so they're probably showing you their high-end piece. The little freezer is up near the top, and once again, what we are seeing is essentially the same piece. They're all white. The door opens from left to right. The, they're up on legs. These are very, very standardized pieces. Uh, here is another one. This is on a showroom floor, as you can see from all the other refrigerators with the monitor tops in the background. Uh, this is what is on display. So this would have been very state-of-the-art. Uh, and, and I love images like this because, as I said, it shows you how these were intended by the manufacturers to be used. So they're showing off the selling points. Here's another with that nice bulbous monitor top. And again, now that we have modern food in this one, you can actually see how very limited the space was. People shopped much more frequently. They did not go grocery shopping once a month. Grocery shopping, especially for perishables, was something that was done two or three times a week. It's just how life was back then. And here is another one. This is a large one. And we're starting to see some changes in the styles because we're moving into the later 20s, early 30s at this point. Yes, it is still on tiny little feet, but no longer those nice big legs. It still does have the monitor top. And here again, a good view of the inside of the refrigerator. This was your food storage area. Uh, and again, another one. And this one has a light inside. And by the way, that was quite a rarity. And when I see a refrigerator of this era with a light inside, my first thought is, ah, has this been renovated by someone in, in modern times to include that feature? It was a rarity. And here, uh, this is great because now we're looking at something of a transitional piece. We still have that cabinet styling, but we are starting to move into the look of the 30s. And let's take a look. Now, this is our last image from the 1920s. We're going to move on to the 30s next. But I thought you'd like to see some transitional pieces. Now, before I start talking about this, I'm going to let you know this is the original picture. The doors on refrigerators opened from left to right. That's just the way they worked. So when I show you the picture, and here we go, I flipped it. The reason I flipped it is because it's easier for us to talk about the older item when it's on the left and the newer item when it's on the right. So on the left, what we have is that cabinet style on high legs with the monitor on top. In this case, it's a rectangular casing on that monitor. It still very much resembles the ice box. We have a surface mounted door and that top, that 
top shelf is it's like the top of a dresser or a cabinet, nice and flat and squared off. When we move over to the piece on the left, as we're moving into the 30s, what we see is a, a rounded top, and the top is actually integrated into the case of the refrigerator itself. It no longer looks like a board nailed on top of our old ice box. The door is inset. And of course, that was uh, a feature that carried on for some time. And only recently did we get rid of that inset door idea. You can see the designs are more sleek and more streamlined at this point. We are definitely starting to move into something that actually resembles a modern refrigerator. Now, let's take a look at the 1930s. This is one of our earlier 1930s refrigerators. We are seeing more useful space on the inside. Notice the larger freezer compartment. And also, notice that little dial on the case beneath the open door. It allows you to control the temperature. This was this startling new thing they came up with. It's still raised on high legs, but we are starting to see some technological improvements as well as some style changes. And here we go. This is another ad for a refrigerator. We still have that sort of 1920s cabinet styling raised up on legs and you notice the top is not integrated. We still have the surface mounted door but this is a later picture, so it's clear that this is a style that was still viable through the 1930s. We have a lot more food storage space, but we still have a super tiny freezer. And notice that instead of a monitor on top, and perhaps you can see there's like a cake plate or something on top of the refrigerator, uh, the mechanical workings are in that section of refrigerator behind the panel that is on top of the food storage compartment. This, another that is moving in the direction of the 1930s. What we have here again is that, that panel over the food storage area, and that's where our inner workings are. We have the open refrigerator. This one is completely empty, fortunately. The tiny freezer, but we're seeing movement in the direction of modern. And this one. And this is great. This is one of the reasons I adore ads. This one is dated. We have a 1935 Electrolux refrigerator. And we have that nice, smooth line uh, going from the top of the refrigerator and then curving down to the sides. Very nice. One door, the door is surface mounted, and the workings of the refrigerator are in the bottom. And you can see that panel down below the refrigerator door. The mechanics are hidden behind that panel. It is still up on legs. The legs are black for some reason. I guess they considered that stylish. But we're starting to see a strong movement away from icebox design. And here we go. And of course, you've got to know, this is the era of refrigerators that I adore. By the time we get into the mid to late 30s, we just have Art Deco Wonderland. Gorgeous Art Deco styling. And we are a very far cry from the lonely old icebox. They're actually beginning to give refrigerators a style of their own. 
And as we can see from this, and we're going to continue looking. Here's another one. This is beautiful. My gosh, this is like the Chrysler building. Oh, oh my. Beautiful deco styling, just gorgeous. And we are going to see that style. It's, it will be modified as time goes on, but we're going to see that style carry us right through to the 1960s. Notice the lever handle. That was a new feature that came in in the 30s. They had handles that were set in horizontally, so you would pull them out toward you. This lever handle, you could pull it down, made it more convenient for closing and opening the refrigerator door when you had your hands full. And here is another one. Again, lovely Art Deco style. Uh, we have the tiny freezer. And if you will look in here, you know what you see. You see three ice cube trays, and that freezer is full. So that just goes to show you what you had available. But notice, you have storage in the refrigerator drawer. And this is like this brand new idea. And you also have access to that bottom compartment. That is not a freezer. That is simply a bottom compartment. On some refrigerators, it wasn't even refrigerated. It was just a storage compartment. In others, it would have been refrigerated. But the mechanics of this refrigerator are up at the top in that area over the freezer. And this one, this is our final piece. Ah, Art Deco Bliss. Now, I did want to take some time to talk about color because something very unusual happened with kitchen appliances in the early 20th century. And we did not see this change until really until we got into the 1960s. And that is refrigerators were almost universally white. Remember, when you look at a piece like this, you are looking at a piece that has been either repainted or perhaps even re-porcelainized many times over the last 80 or 90 years. This may not be the original color. In all likelihood, this is not the original color. That is not a color that was used in kitchens of this era. So refrigerators were almost all white, like seriously. And stoves were coming in almost every color of the rainbow. It's a totally interesting idea. But that was exactly what was happening. Your refrigerator and your stove usually didn't match and generally wasn't expected to. Sort of a little oddity. It's one that we, from our modern sensibilities, have to struggle a little to get used to. But the stoves and the refrigerators came to us through different channels. Remember, the refrigerator was something novel. A, the icebox was something novel when it came into being in the 19th century. And then, of course, the refrigerator was built on that. The stoves, and let's face it, stoves had been with us for a very long time. Stoves had their own independent history. And we'll get into that when we talk about stoves. And apparently that is why people were very accepting of the idea that a refrigerator looked one way and a stove looked another. They did not expect sets in their appliances. Um, if your appliances didn't come in sets, people were cool with that. Okay, so this is where we're going to break off. We're going to have a chance to continue looking at that lovely Art Deco refrigerator. We will pick up tomorrow with refrigeration of the 40s, and in our case, it's going to be the Second World War era, because remember, these were expensive items. They were not easy to replace. Consequently, you would keep your refrigerator for as long as you possibly could. 
events, there was a lot of flexibility in terms of when a certain piece would be spotted in a certain home or apartment. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on our way out. We will see you tomorrow. Have a terrific day.